Hello, everyone. One of the things that I have been pointing out is the vast difference in progress made between the Russian troops and Ukrainian troops. So we talked about this multiple times when uh, news outlets are insisting, oh, Russians are making progress in the East. I'm not denying that they're making some progress in the East, but boy, howdy, it is costing them. So this is um, from Kiev Independent talking about this very thing. So there were um, Ukrainian troops struggling in the east, in the Donetsk region. They got a relief from the Azov uh, group and, uh, you know, they were able to actually stabilize the situation. They acknowledged the situation was catastrophic, their own words, but they were able to bring it under control. And again, I invite everybody to look at the maps. There's so many good maps out there. Um, I recommended many times um, the Institute of the Study of War has excellent maps. Uh, BBC has been trying to keep up and you can observe the movement of armies over the course of time. Not just like right this second, but I invite you to look at the progression. Okay, because that is important. I want to remind everybody that when Russian tanks first rolled over the Ukrainian border on February 24th, 2022, um, their plan was to have the victory parade in Kiev in like three days. So much so that they didn't even suggest that their soldiers should pack additional supplies or anything. They had them pack their dress uniforms. I'm not joking. It was a thing. And here we are two and a half years later and Russians are still confused why they weren't greeted with flowers. So there you go. Notice one of those little ticker items. Uh, somebody appealed to UN and Red Cross over the execution of Ukrainian POW that was seen on video. Sweetie, I appreciate your effort, but we have already established that UN and Red Cross have become completely impotent. So there is no use appealing to them because they're not going to do a damn thing. They're going to express serious concern or something like that, and that's where it's going to end. Now, I am continuously frustrated, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, over U.S. blocking Ukraine's requests for long-range weapons and permission to use them in Russia. You know what? How about we try this first and then determine whether it was effective? How about we do that? Get some experimental data. You know, because, again, the whole situation is so ridiculous. I still don't understand why we're having to make this argument over and over and over again. Ukrainians understand that there is no panacea to win the war. They get it. But they would rather not have to fight the war with one hand tight behind their back, especially considering that the aid both U.S. and E.U. had promised does not arrive in a timely fashion. We talked about this several days ago about the bureaucratic snare uh, with the um, frozen Russian funds. You would think, right? It's not even the EU's money. It's not their taxes. It's not their social services. It's the interest off of the money that is already sitting in their bank. You would think that would not be so complicated, but they managed to screw up even that, let alone 
the delivery of actual physical weapons and supplies. Meanwhile, Russia has no qualms about using its all-range weapons, short, medium, and long, to do this. Here we have another strike in uh, Pavlograd, where one person was killed, 64 people were wounded, including children. Are you going to sit there and tell me it's not okay for Ukraine to use long-range weapons in response to this? And remember, this has been going for two and a half years. How many Ukrainian civilians have to die before Ukraine is allowed to really deliver a response strike? And this is going on. We uh, did have uh, some movement from the Russian troops. Again, why is it okay for them? And, of course, you know, there is the concern about the uh, Iranian ballistic missiles, and I told you this before. Russia's allies have no, no such qualms about what Russia uses the weapons for. Russia snaps its fingers, they hand it over. And, of course, we have... Uh, People in Lviv mourning the decimation of an entire family where a mother and three daughters were killed. Only their, uh, the father, the husband and the father survived the strike delivered by Russia. And after all of that and everything that's happened over the last two and a half years and everything that's happened over the last ten and a half years, you're going to sit there and tell me that it's not okay for Ukraine to use long-range weapons inside Russia. Grow up.